Hello YouTube and Facebook. Today I'm going to explain to you how to transplant a computer's components into a new case. So this is my old case. I've had it for a very long time. As you can see, it's a complete mess. I mean, the hardware in here is very good. I'm actually quite satisfied with it because I've upgraded many times over the years. But you can see that because I've had to keep the case open uh, due to improper ventilation, uh, it's built up quite a bit of really gross kind of dust and cat hair because I have a cat. The wiring's not too good because I've redone it so many times. Um, and so we're going to improve by using this, which is a case by Deep Cool. Now it's not quite as high quality as my Antec case instead in, in terms of the metal construction. As you can see, it's mostly plastic. But it does have some nice features. Like for example, it's got two fans over here at the top, one on the back and two on the front where the drive bays are. So this is gonna cool all of your hard drives and solid state drives. Uh, and uh, the other ones will provide proper airflow throughout the case. Uh, the nice thing about this is it's actually got dust filters. You can't really see them because it's um, you'd have to lift up the actual uh, fans to... Anyway, the, the point is it's got dust filters. So hopefully once I transplant this uh, motherboard and components from this case to this one, we'll have uh, a lot less problems with dust buildup. And I can't tell you how often I vacuum this thing out. It still gets dust and cat hair inside it, which is definitely not good for the components. So keep watching as I do this. So the first step was easy. What we did was take out the uh, hard drives, the um, disk drive, and the video card, as well as the solid state drive, which doesn't really fit into any of these bays. Uh, even though I tried using a three and a half inch bracket, uh, it, it still wouldn't fit into the Antec tool free drive base. Now, if anybody's ever used tool free drive base, uh, this is it. This is what it looks like. It's um, basically, they're not really tool free because you still have to screw the hard drive onto the actual uh, bay uh, with a screwdriver, which as I remember is a tool. And then you just uh, pop it in like that and it slides in and you squeeze these guys. It's tricky with just one in left hand, but you squeeze these guys, it pulls right out. Of course, you do have to disconnect the SATA cable and the SATA power cable. Uh, this new case has the same basic thing, but it's got three uh, two and a half inch bays and three three and a half inch bays, which is quite nice. Uh, they are plastic though, um, which again, you know, it's only a $60 case and the amount of features you get with all these fans and stuff and uh, I think it's not bad. Plus it's actually lightweight, which is nice as well. So uh, the next step is going to be to take out the rest of the uh, components. So in this particular case, one of the problems is if you want to take out the power supply, uh, you actually have to take out the whole motherboard because it doesn't fit through this gap. You have to take it out this way and it would actually bump into the motherboard here. And if you try to do that, uh, you probably break your motherboard. Um, so in this one, they made an improvement, which is that the uh, power supply is at the bottom. So the whole ATX uh, motherboard doesn't start until here. So the motherboard is going to be right there. So if you ever want to change the power supply, you can just pull it out. And uh, you don't have to, I mean, apart from reconnecting it to the new motherboard, there's no other work to be done. You don't have to take out the actual motherboard, which is kind of a pain, especially because I've got this massive two fan uh, CPU cooler because I like to overclock. Uh, but in any case, uh, we'll move on to the next step now. Okay, so the next step was to unplug the power from all of the components. You can see I've positioned the, uh, all the power cables kind of uh, around the case. And the reason for that is just to make a little bit of room here so it's easier to take out this uh, motherboard, which you have, I have to do very carefully because this particular heat sink is very heavy and I'm not going to want to snap the board. Now, in order to uh, take it out, um, you have to unscrew these screws here 
which are positioned, there's another one. Um, they're positioned in different places depending on your motherboard. Um, but the ATX is pretty standard, so it tends to be in uh, the top left corner, mid left, uh, kind of by the, the bottom right by the SATA connectors, which are your hard drive and you know other drive connectors. Uh, and there's probably one or two that I'm not seeing right now, but in any case, just look for all of those. If you're trying to pull it out and you feel any resistance whatsoever, make sure you took out all the screws. Um, I also took out the expansion cards like this one, which is two Firewire and three USB because I used to use a power uh, Firewire device and I, I don't anymore. And this is just an extra two USB. And then uh, these are the SATA connectors. So the SATA cables, um, they run from the hard drives right here. That's the SATA, that's the SATA power. Uh, and same actually with the uh, new solid state drives. I got this one recently. Uh, same exact connections, which is very convenient. So uh, we will move on by removing the actual, oh, by the way, um, this here, uh, because I have two fans on here, there's a Y connector so that you only need to use one fan connector from your power supply to power it um, and uh, basically the reason for that is because you actually have to connect it to the CPU uh, fan control on the motherboard and not directly to the power supply and there's usually only one of those uh, but in any case we'll keep that connected just so that we don't lose it or you know there's really no reason to disconnect it there at this point in time. And uh, we'll move on to the next step, which is to take out the motherboard. So I'll go ahead and remove those screws. Okay, so we've taken out all the screws. Now with this device being so heavy and securely attached here, it might as well just lift it out by, by this part. So as you can see, you just gently lift it out. Make sure it doesn't hit anything. And there you go. So that's your motherboard, and we'll just uh, we'll just place it over here for now. So what we're gonna have to do now is just vacuum this out. I have been vacuuming these parts as we go, uh, but uh, there's still a lot of dust and cat hair and stuff. So we're gonna want to clean this up real nice. Uh, so this will take a little while, and uh, when I'm done that, we'll. Uh, move on to removing the power supply and transplanting the rest of the parts into the case. So now we've taken out the screws from the power supply. There were just four of them here and um, you just pull it out like this. Now you see why we had to take out the motherboard first. Now, thing to remember about this new case is the reason why it has feet that are this high. So basically, uh, this power supply has uh, a fan on the bottom, like all power supplies do, and when it's on the top, that's working. When it's at the bottom, it would be blocked here by the bottom of it, and no air would be moving into it, which is bad. So basically here, um, they're, they actually made a little grate, um, and it's elevated, so there's still airflow out the back, uh, or out the, any of the sides of the, the bottom, uh, so that even though the fan is down here, it will still work. I vacuumed out the uh, parts as best that I could. Uh, now it's still pretty dirty. So the thing to do here is to get some rubbing alcohol. Uh, I use 99% rubbing alcohol. Uh, you can buy this in some pharmacies. Uh, this one has a nice feature that it has a spray top. And you'll notice it's a little bit dirty because I use it often for degreasing stuff. And um, well, what you want to do is grab a, a piece of paper towel, uh, spray it on the paper towel, not on the hardware itself, and then wipe it off. Um, the nice thing about 99% rubbing alcohol, because it has so little water, if there's any residual left it evaporates very quickly and that ensures that there's no water contact to your system and uh, as we all know water and electricity uh, that's that's a bad mix so i'm going to go ahead and try to clean off uh, the rest of this gunk 
Okay, so I was trying to avoid this, but um, even though I wiped off the blades of the fan, as you can see, there's still plenty of dust and possibly cat hair behind the fan. So what I'm going to have to do is remove the fan from the, GP, uh, from the CPU cooler. And this is very simple. There are four screws here. Um, now, Cooler Master stock has them very tight, so precision screwdriver is going to be very difficult uh, to get at. So you're going to want to use a regular screwdriver, but the smallest Phillips that you can find, a nice thick handle so you can get a little bit of torque on there. Uh, now, uh, once you remove it, you will see that these screws are quite long. Um, these screws are actually kind of hard to find, so you don't want to lose them. Now that we've removed the fan, we can see an alarming amount of cat hair and uh, dust kind of mixed together. In fact, it's so thick that you could actually lift it off with your fingers uh, without needing a vacuum or anything like that. And there's still a bit stuck to the inside of the fan, so uh, the inside of the um, CPU cooler. So as we can see, there's a good reason why we took off this fan. Uh, now, taking all this out is definitely going to remove, uh, going to improve airflow and uh, cool your CPU better. So, uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the other fan and wipe out the inside of the fan as well, and hopefully we'll see a big improvement in cooling. So I've cleaned out the fans and the space behind the fans as best as I could. It's not perfect, but I got most of it out. Um, now the thing is, when you're reattaching the fans to a dual uh, fan cooler you want to make sure they're both uh, spinning uh, they're, they're both flowing in the same direction because if you have them both flowing in opposite directions they sort of cancel each other out what you want is uh, the, the intake is here and the outtake is here so that the air is constantly flowing through uh, the cooler and that will be uh, a million times more efficient than the other way around and the way that you do that is you make sure that the blades are curved in the same direction uh, in both fans. When you're looking over top, you can see that the curve is uh, left to, to bottom right, and here top left to bottom right. So that way we know that both of these fans are moving in the same direction and optimizing airflow. The next step is to put the power supply into the power supply bay here in the new case. Uh, now I know you, I, I said that you could do this after you put the motherboard in in this new case, but because I already have the motherboard out, it's actually easier uh, to do it this way than the other way around still, because you have to kind of maneuver around the components of the motherboard. So let's go ahead and put the power supply in. And remember, the fan goes down. So in here, there's a bottom vent to make sure that the air flows out of the case. Put in the power supply with these four screws here, fan on the bottom. And I've gone ahead and connected this uh, power cable, which is for the front fans, which they fed through here. Um, and also, um, I've put in the disk drive because it's actually easier to do it at this point uh, in my opinion, than uh, when the motherboard's actually in. I'm not going to install the rest of the drives yet because um, that's actually easier to do after the motherboard's in. So we'll see how the rest of this goes. Okay, so here's a common problem that can happen when you're replacing a motherboard is that when we were unscrewing this screw, what actually got unscrewed was a little brass fitting that um, was in our previous case. And it appears to be kind of stuck to this one. So we're going to have to get some pliers and uh, go ahead and take that out. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is grasp it gently with the pliers and turn it with a screwdriver from the screw side. And we're going to have to take that out because otherwise um, it won't fit into our new case. Okay, so now that we've put it into the new case, you want to make sure that all the screw holes line up with the brass fittings. It's a little bit difficult to see, but the brass fitting is showing through this hole and some of the other ones. Now here's an extra brass fitting on the side here past where the motherboard ends. The reason they put these in is because some of these cases are actually reverse compatible with older forms of ATX and possibly even BTX. So they put in new, uh, they, they put in more uh, brass fittings than you actually need 
to put in a standard uh, ATX case. So if you see some that are outside of the reach of your motherboard, don't worry about that. That's for other types of motherboards. Just make sure you put in as many of these screws that go into the brass fittings behind them as you possibly can. And that should be all of them. Okay, so now it's time to replace the new, uh, the old, uh, okay, so now it's time to replace the old uh, tool-free drive bays with these new ones. Now these ones are a bit elevated because of these rubber dampeners. So they've included some uh, longer screws. So why not, you know, use these shiny new screws to put these in. Make sure you put in all of them. Otherwise, uh, it might rattle around a little bit, create a little bit of noise, or uh, it might not be sturdy enough if you're uh, moving it around. But these rubber dampeners are really nice because they reduce the sound of the hard drives. It works exactly the same way for the 2.5 inch bays, but I'm just going to show you the 3.5 inch bay. So when you're putting these on, you want to make sure that these flaps are on the opposite end of the... Uh, inputs because the inputs should go inside of your system and uh, this side should face outwards. So we've connected most of the power to the motherboard. I'm not going to explain exactly all of the connections because it is different in, in different positions on some motherboards. Uh, the most annoying thing is this bit right in here which is the power LED, uh, the hard drive LED, the power switch, and the reset switch. They're all kind of combined here into one long bus. So you're going to want to look up the manual for your motherboard to see where exactly those connections are. Um, and then uh, plug in all of these little two-pin switches. Now the thing about that is that um, it's actually easier to do if you pull apart the wires a little bit on those uh, connectors. Uh, because then you'll have a little bit more wiggle room because otherwise if you plug one in and you and you kind of pull it while trying to plug the other one in, uh, the first one's going to come out. So you'll be here forever trying to plug those in. So if you pull the wires uh, apart a little bit, uh, it makes the whole thing a lot easier. Now what I've done here is connected the um, power, the SATA power and the SATA plugs into both of the hard drives. And I've connected the SATA cables to the hard drive, the SATA ports here. Um, so what you want to do is feed those in through the bottom port here. And then that way, when you slide them in, they all fit neatly underneath. So that helps kind of manage cables because as it is already, I've got this eight channel audio cable going across here, which doesn't look that great, but that's really the only way to put it in. Once we put in the video card though, we can pull it to the side like this and underneath the video card. So you won't be able to see it as much. Okay. So after a lot of tweaking and trying to get the wires in properly, it looks like we've got everything connected reasonably neatly. Um, in any case, we can always fine tune that later, but uh, let's plug this in and make sure it works. Okay, so what ended up happening was uh, I actually ended up making a mistake in the wiring somehow, even though I checked it a million times. And so I brought it in to uh, the local computer store, Canada Computers in this case, and uh, I brought it in to get diagnosed. And uh, it turns out the motherboard needed to be reset. And the way you do that is actually by putting a screwdriver against two of the contacts and sort of forcing like a mini short circuit. Now, um, I wasn't I knew that this was an option, but I really wasn't comfortable doing it myself, so I got some professionals to do it. Um, it didn't cost much, it was like 40 bucks. But basically now it's running fine, and uh, we'll take a look at it in just a second. Okay, so this is uh, the computer running now uh, perfectly fine. You can see that the fans are spinning. This is the inside of the case. And uh, the wiring's not exactly perfect. I might neaten it up a little bit later, but <clears throat> the components uh, look great. And uh, I'll probably install some LED fans on the back and on the top because currently the only LED fans are at the front. Now they look blue, they're actually white. Uh, the reason they're blue is because part of this motherboard is blue and sort of reflecting the light. But in any case, you can hear that it's very quiet. Right, and uh, if you feel on the back, uh, the air coming out of it is pretty cold. 
So that means it's all working well and efficiently. Uh, there's a total of 10 fans on this case now. So there's two on the top, two, one on the back, uh, two on the front. There's one in the power supply, as there always is. Uh, there's two in the video card, and there's this huge two-fan CPU cooler. So that adds up to 10 fans. And what that does for you is not only improve cooling and airflow, but it'll actually, um, it, it, it means that all the fans will run slower, so it'll be quieter. Now, uh, my girlfriend sort of asked me to do this at the end of this video when I told her I was making it, so here it is. It's alive! So, there you go.